<laughs> welcome everyone. And welcome everyone who is here with us and those who are joining us online or in consciousness. Welcome to my heart. <clears throat> this is the month we celebrate love, reggae, and the resilience and triumph of Africans at home in Africa and here in the diaspora. And of course, Bob Marley, Dennis Brown, Mikey Bennett, and other musical legends with an Earth Day in February. <laughs> As Bob Marley says, one love, one heart. Let's get together and feel all right. Let's just sing it. So I'm going to ask Maestro to just lead us into it. Just going to sing the first verse. One love, one art. Let's get together and feel all right. Bob Marley says, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. One love. And love is here. It is who and what we are, awaiting our recognition, acceptance, and realization for its glorious manifestation. Dr. Robert Waldinger, who is the current director of the Harvard Study of Adult Development, an ongoing analysis that followed more than 700 men since they were teenagers in 1938. And in the study, he found that people who were more satisfied in their relationships at age 50 were the healthiest at age 80. And here's the part that I have also concluded from observation, which was supported by this study, that people who feel they can count on other persons. People who feel they can count, who, sorry, people who feel they can't count on other persons suffer early memory decline and decline in health and in their quality of life. So my friends, fulfilling relationships are necessary for happiness and for the full expression and realization of love and of ourselves. When I was a teenager, I read a book which has had a profound effect on me since then, and even now by shaping my views on love. It is The Art of Loving by Erich Fromm. Fromm argues that in present day societies, we have to learn how to love because the overwhelming majority are alienated from God and from each other. Our pastor and teacher, Reverend John Scott, always tell us to make love the way of our heart and the heart of our way. So today I've entitled this encouragement, The Heart of Loving. If you, love, if you yearn for a loving partner or partners, wonderful relationships with friends and families, good relationships at your workplace, or just to live in harmony with everyone, then this encouragement is for you. Make love the way of your heart and the heart of your way. So how do we do that? Jesus, the master teacher, told us to love thy neighbor as thyself. But we cannot love our neighbor in an arrogant, egocentric, conceited, or narcissistic way. Therefore, 
these traits are not part of self-love, but masks that try to disguise insecurities and ignorance. Loving oneself from tells us mean caring about ourselves, taking responsibility for ourselves, respecting ourselves, and knowing ourselves. That is being realistic and honest about our strengths and weaknesses. In order to be able to truly love another person, we first need to love ourselves in this way. And to care for ourselves from, say, is to have an active concern for the life and the growth of that which we love. This requires active participation in the well-being of others and ourselves. We are here to live and enjoy ourselves. So take time for yourselves to be and do things that enhance your good feelings that you can share and reciprocate with others. Make, make time to spend with those who allow you to feel good about yourself and about them and be authentic. Accepting, and your, accepting people and yourself for their intrinsic value and not treat each, others, each other as commodities with use and exchange value. That is not to treat people in terms of what we can get from them or what we can get out of them. Responsibility means to be able to respond, to know what love would have me do now. It means to be able to go within and see with the eyes of love, to be empathetic but not sympathetic. By being the love that you are, you allow others to find that love within themselves that transcend all seeming challenges. Respect is the ability to see a person as he is, to be aware of his unique individuality. Respect means the concern that the other person should grow and unfold as he is. It means respecting yourself by concerning yourself with unfolding as you because everybody else is already taken. At times, it may, it may mean reminding others that if they feel negative emotions are out of sync, it is because they are trying to be who they are not. And knowledge of ourselves and others, from, for, according to from, is found only through love. And I like this quote. It is the act of loving, of giving myself in the act of penetrating the other person. I find myself. I discover myself. I discover us both. I discover man. Knowing ourselves as we are known is part of our eternal journey. As Paul said, when that which is perfect has come. But on this journey, we can know ourselves, to greet ourselves with elation through the recognition and acceptance of who we are, as Derek Walcott writes in Love After Love. True practicing the art of loving, Fromm tells us that the separation and powerlessness we feel from alienation is dissolved. From the only place it has ever appeared, in our consciousness as we recognize our union and our oneness, which is love. Then we shall see face to face. And now that I know in part, I shall know fully, even as I am known. As Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12. This is making love the heart of our way. The heart of loving is making love the way of our heart. This is our most important relationship, according to Esther X, who tell us that to be in alignment with that 
which has looked at us in a million ways and have loved us in each is the most important relationship and our divine assignment. One way to do this is to keep our vibration up at the level of love or above. And there's a spiritual practice which allows us to vibrate at love and above and to come into vibrational alignment with the love that is you. And this is an assignment that I'm going to give you. <laughs> and, and you have to do it every day till it becomes the way how you will show up. So this is a long-term assignment because although love is who we are, the self-givingness of spirit in, true, and as us, our conditioned perceptions builds up many walls that we have to remove brick by brick. Bill Maher, a comic, a comedian rather, who appears on HBO, said that in a broadcast that the USA doesn't need a border wall with Mexico because the Americans who want that wall already have that wall inside of them, inside of their hearts and their consciousness. And he went on to say, which also applies to us, that any time we see someone of a different race or ethnicity and feel uncomfortable, there is a wall. Any time we see someone who we think is better off or worse off than ourselves, there is a wall. Any time we have what we call in Jamaica bad mind, <laughs> And any time we see someone of a different sexual orientation and we feel discomfort, there is a wall. When we see someone whose religious practices are different from ours and we, are, and we think that we are better than them, or even see them as them, there is a wall. So we are going to break down the walls and build bridges to the heaven within our consciousness. So this is our home study exercise, which is adapted from our foundation classes. So some of you may be familiar with this very powerful practice. And you'll be meditating and writing. So make sure you have the space where you can be comfortable and uninterrupted for about 30 minutes. This is the time you'll need. And you need to have your journal with you also. Initially, you will do a six-day routine with three stages which you can follow in sequence. On day one, you will do the first stage. In this stage, you relax into meditation, focusing on your breath and becoming aware of the rise and fall of your chest. That's how we usually go into meditation. And as you relax into your breathing, focus your attention on your heart. Then begin thinking of someone you love dearly and easily. Then you shift your thoughts to how you feel when you do this. And you want to tune into that feeling. Because this exercise is to let you become aware of that feeling. So it's not a visualization exercise, it's a tuning in to that vibration of love within you. So you spend two thirds of your time meditating, then you journal on how you felt for the rest of the time. And on day two and three, you will repeat all you did on day one, but also now you begin to add more people that you care for that you will love, that you are just fond of, just like your spiritual family, and become aware of how you feel, and then you do your journaling. And on day four to six, you will do stage three. So day four to six, 
you are going to add more people to this flow of love. And this time now you add people who are challenging for you to feel love for. Right? So you focus on your dear ones, expand it, and now you're going to try to carry that same sensation into the meditation, into people who you are feeling challenging, challenges for. But what you want to capture is that frequency of love and above. Because as Grammy-nominated singer Ledesi sings, there is nothing higher than this feeling of love. If you want a detailed copy of this assignment, you can check Reverend Ann after the service. The assignment? OK. That's a suggestion that can, can follow. When you are vibrating at love and above, you are in alignment with who you are and who you came here to be. And right action is established in your life and affairs. And fulfilling relationships become your manifest experience because universal law as Esther X tells us, is that vibration precedes manifestation. I remember my high school days and our principal for the f my first four years in high school, Mr. Douglas Forrest, affectionately called Dougs, was someone who radiated love effortlessly. He gave me a summer job after he left KC to put his papers in order so that he could spend more time doing his gardening and listening to his music. <laughs> you know? And I, I was always, always marveled at how peaceful and centered Mr. Forrest would appear. You know? My fondest memories of dogs are two times he had to discipline our class. On the first occasion, the teacher arrived after the class was scheduled to begin. And being a group of third formers, our cacophony of intelligence was interpreted as excessive noise. And the teacher <laughs> felt that she failed to call the headmaster in order to restore order. <laughs> We felt that dog thought that she was unable to control the class. But to save our face and discipline us at the same time, he made us listen to Paul Robeson for the rest of the period. And by the time the class was over, we were all singing Water Boy and Old Man River. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and it was my first introduction to Paul Robeson you know, and that type of music. And it was really a truly enriching experience. And the second time came after a teacher disrespected the class and we decided that she had to apologize before she could proceed with the class. So she sent for Mr. Forrest. So he came and learned what happened but decided we should have allowed the teacher to continue our class and reported the incident if we felt that strongly about it. He said that he had to give the entire class the tension. So what he did? For the detention, we had to go over to Holy Trinity Cathedral, where the choir was doing a recital that evening, so that he could have students in the audience. Oh, look around. We were the only students. <laughs> we were the only students in the audience. <laughs> When you are at love or above, you always know what to do, even when you have to improvise, because right action is your part of least resistance. But many students remember Mr. Forrest for his ability to see the best in the students that he knew, even when they couldn't see it in themselves. As evidenced by incident related by Robert Fletcher at one of our Tuesday evening services. 
The case he choir was due to perform, and Mr. Forrest realized that one of his tenors was missing. He took the other tenors with him to go to the home of the missing tenor. Robert said that when they went to the home, this was the first time he knew that so many people could live at the same address. But the residents, because they were in their KC blazers, knew who they came for. So Mr. Forrest found a student in a seemingly embarrassing position because he told him that he didn't have the bus fare to come to the recital. Mr. Forrest told him, and even now, why this really touched me, that that cannot be because he is one of the most important persons at Kingston College. You know, and that he should get ready and come because they are not leaving him. This person is now a leading neurosurgeon in the United States. And he said that was the moment that his life was transformed. Yeah. And the way how he put it is that Mr. Forrest loved him into being the person who he is today. Esther Hicks says, if you are doing your spiritual practice and your vibration is up, then even if your dearest and your best is on a different wavelength, maybe there may be bills to pay, maybe you left your phone unguarded and when it rang, she saw an a name come up that shouldn't be on your phone. <laughs> but if you are in vibrational alignment with love and tell yourself, like Nehemiah, like Nehemiah, I am doing a great work and I can't come down, your significant other sensing that you are in a different place will invariably ask you, why are you not taking the situation seriously? and what you have to say for yourself. And you could say, I'm doing a, no, no, you wouldn't say that. <laughs> so being, <laughs> so being, <laughs> being omniscient and being in alignment, you may say something like this. I was remembering the beautiful times we shared and how happy you were when you remembered what we were doing. And be in alignment, since you are so sincere and authentic, invariably the other person's vibration will shift and right action will resolve the situation. As within, so without. If your heart is filled with love and you are focusing on the best in everyone you meet, your energy will shift the energy in any seemingly discordant situation, whether it be at your workplace, at home, or at gatherings. When you are in alignment with the love that you are, you will know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Because love is revealed when love is realized. Dear Friends, there is great love here for you. Because the spirit that is the real you have looked at you in a million ways and have loved you in each. Practice the art of loving and make love the way of your heart and, your, and the heart of your way. Keep the vibes up. You are doing a great work, my friends. Don't come down. So as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. Let us all sing the first verse of One Love again. Maestro, will you please sing?
Namaste.